So some news <clears throat> that I want to share with you, just kind of going over what's going on in the marketplace today. This is very, very interesting. So I'm going to share my screen. First piece of news right here. This gets me excited as a financial coach specializing in velocity banking, which most of you here is going to be part of your process when you're coaching your clients is you're going to be most likely showing them velocity banking or helping them get to that point. So here's what the market has been doing. 2022 this is the Wall Street Journal, right? One of the most credible, I, I would say, um, news magazines and, and platforms says more homeowners using HELOCs as financial safety net. Home equity line of credit were up 40% in the second quarter from a year earlier, right? Let me take this ad out. Let me zoom. You guys can see this nice and clearly. As high interest rates drive up the cost of borrowing money, more people are tapping into their equity, right? Americans took out $66 billion in home equity lines of credit or HELOCs in the second quarter, right? So that HELOCs, I'm wondering if they're bundling in home equity loans as well. I'm assuming that's the case because most people don't even know what a home equity line of credit is. Um, home equity line of credit in the first position is pretty rare. Not that many banks actually do it. So first lien HELOCs, pretty rare. Second lien HELOC, not as promoted. So I'm wondering if that number is also including home equity loans. And I'm willing to bet that is the case because it falls under HELOC, right? So anyways, according to data from real estate analytics from Atom Data Solutions, these accounts, which allow homeowners to borrow against the value of their home, are making a comeback as higher rates make it less favorable to refinance a mortgage. Very interesting how velocity banking is not only good in a low interest rate environment, it's also good in a high interest rate environment. When other lending options start to tighten up, even if the rate on a HELOC increases, which it has to what, seven, eight. I just spoke with a client today, has a home equity line of credit with Navy Fed, second position, 10.75%. Even at 10.75%, we did the math, we're going to bring that borrowing cost down to somewhere around 5%. Now, in addition, I did tell her, I'm like, 10.75 is crazy. We, we should look at a different bank at some point, right? We want to get out of that. So a HELOC works like a credit card, but since it is backed by your property, generally offers a much more favorable interest rate. The average HELOC rate today, 7.7%, according to bankrate.com, compared with the average 19.04% on a credit card and 10.64% average personal loan rate. So this is really advantageous, guys, where I'm, I'm getting clients that have personal loans amortized 13%, 15%, 12%, 16%, 18%. And then you show them how they can get access to a personal line of credit at 9.9% or even 10 or even 11 and how they can bring that to less than 4%, less than 5%, right? The conversation of Velocity Banking just got extremely easier. Just want to let you know. So you're technically an amateur financial coach, but you're an experienced velocity banking practitioner because you've been doing it with me for the last few years or maybe a year, just know the conversation just got easier to introduce velocity banking. So go back four years when I first started, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, right? Interest rates have been extremely low. So the argument for velocity banking tends to be tougher when mortgage rates are down and, and just loan rates are are less. So it's like, wait, does it make sense to borrow at 5.5% simple interest to pay 3.5 amortized on my car loan? How do I make sense of that? So that conversation is is being is becoming less of a dispute with the customer. So keep that in mind. Very, very interesting right now. So Owners get a credit line based on their home equity, but don't have to use all or even any of the available funds. Financial planners say the ready access to money HELOCs provide can particularly uh, appealing during a time of economic uncertainty. Absolutely. As long as borrowers refrain from treating their homes as an ATM, lenders tend to tighten credit standards during a downturn. So it may be wise to apply for HELOC now if you're worried about needing the funds later, they said. This is true. When COVID hit, they locked up all HELOCs. It was hard 
to find a HELOC in 2020. It was not easy because of shutdowns, right? The mass resignation, right? Of people leaving and then the mass exodus between different states. So it, it got a little weird. Well, we might see that happen again in 2023. It depends if the so-called everything crash hits, like Robert Kiyosaki says, and maybe a lot of other you know, experts in the financial space. That's what they're saying right now, that the everything crash is coming. Well, if that's the case, well, getting access to a home equity line of credit is going to become more difficult for those who are not positioned. I always throw that in there for those who are not positioned because all through 2020, in fact, the most amount of clients I ever got was in 2020. And those people were positioned, they were doing their homework, and they still got access to home equity line of credit for a second PLOC. So it's you're in a very unique position as a coach that is adding Velocity Banking to the mix. Very interesting. So clients are saying that they want a safety net as credit card bills rise along with unemployment fears, said Ryan, regional president and senior loan officer at Home Loan Lend Hometown Lenders of Texas. While HELOCs can provide that financial safety net, homeowners have to understand what they are getting into. This is where you would come in. <clears throat> people like myself, providing that education. How many of those people who took out $66 billion in HELOCs have any idea how to use Velocity Banking? I am willing to bet you over 75% of that number are people that have no idea what Velocity Banking is. They have no idea how to paycheck park and move money in and out and keep cash flow in and offset costs. What they're doing right now is they're just tapping into the equity to basically cover their bills and expenses, or they're remodeling their homes. They're fixing their bathrooms. They're doing the roof. They're doing the kitchen. They're doing the the patio, the backyard, whatever, the pool, because their home isn't selling anymore, right? Or they were looking to sell and now prices are, you know, the, the buyer is slowing down right? Maybe that, or they figured that's what you do. Like that's how it's sold at the bank, right? Use your home equity line of credit, remodel your home. Da, da, da. There's no fairly any education, right? On how to properly use these things, right? For times like these, where now is the best time to be knocking down high interest debt when investments are not performing as well, right? When markets are volatile, this is a, a really good time to be paying down debt, right? Especially high interest credit card debts, high interest personal loans, um, now high interest mortgages, right? So while demand for HELOCs is increasing, some banks are choosing not to offer them due to the risk. Very true. Again, it's a niche product. Instead, borrowers often turn to credit unions, uh-oh, and community banks to get HELOCs, he said. Big banks such as Wells Fargo, what do I always say, guys? Stay away from the big banks when it comes to getting these home equity line of credits because they're not as flexible, right, with the bigger banks. And they could, on a flip of a switch, turn it off on you versus a community or credit union typically is non-for-profit and the only customers are in your area. So they're they're a controlled a more controlled type of a bank, less likely to feel major hits like a JP Morgan would or Bank of America, or Wells Fargo, right? So HELOCs have to halting them during the pandemic, right? Boom, said that earlier. Citibank spokesman said that the bank temporarily suspended HELOCs but plans to offer them again next year. Bank of America continues to offer HELOCs according to the company, right? Uh, let's see how HELOCs work. We understand that in here. Let's see. They're given the breakdown. Interest rates on here typically variable, meaning they will fluctuate as interest rates change. We know that. Other factors go into the rate, including your credit score, debt to income ratio, the amount of money you're seeking to borrow. Yep. HELOC applications also come with certain fees. Not every HELOC, okay? Some, if you do the research, there's HELOCs that you can find for zero costs, right? Zero closing costs, uh, along with other, right? Add up to be between 2 and 5% of the total credit line. Interest paid on the HELOC can be tax deductible, but only if you use your HELOC to pay for home renovations and improvements, right? Let's see. HELOCs for home improvements. One of the most common uses for HELOCs is to fund home improvement projects. Why is that? Man, you ever think deeper how they get you? They got you on the amortize, and then they're like, take out more equity, fix your home, increase the value of it, but you had to pay closing costs. You're paying interest. So how much really are you netting when you 
improve the home. Rather, is there a more effective way to improve your home? It's boom, velocity banking. So these are the type of conversations that you could have with the client. And here's what's even cooler, guys. $66 billion have been pumped into the marketplace in HELOCs. So when you're talking to people now about velocity banking and how they can use their HELOC this way, that way, they're now saying, oh, wait, I, I just got a HELOC six months ago, or I have a home equity line of credit. Can this work, Amanda? Can this work, Jessro? Can this work, Mr. Ramos, right? Like they're now having the debt tool already there. So all the work that I've been doing the last four years, trying to expose people to what a HELOC is and how to use it and you know all the questions to ask, how to get one, it's becoming more common, right? Now it's just a matter of combining the strategy with the product because someone could have the best first lien, second lien HELOC, but have no idea how to use it. And they're in no better of a position, right? So uh, by the way, I will copy paste this put it in the chat so you guys have it. Let me just go like that, throw it in the chat, boom, and come back to my screen here so it doesn't do all that crazy stuff. Let's see, where were we? Advises clients to only carry HELOC balance for short term, typically around 18 to 24 months due to the product's variable interest rate. Look at that, 18 to 14 months. What does Denzel say? Six to nine, right? We make chunks based on a six to nine up to 12 month window, right? Whatever chunk we are making, we want to be able to eliminate or bring that chunk down to a zero cost of borrowing within six to nine months, 12 months being the max. They're saying 18 to 24, right? It's all part of the game, okay? At the end of the third quarter, the average US homeowner had 196,000 in tappable equity, down 9.6% from the second quarter, but still up about 10% from the same time last year. All right, so, okay, let's see. When HELOCs may not be the best option, warns clients against taking out HELOCs for large non-discretionary pure expenses such as vacation or wedding. These expenses, while they may provide short-term emotional high, don't provide a financial return the way a home improvement might, he said. Yeah. What about, you know, throwing in, hey, what, what if you just move credit card debts? Like th these conversations aren't being had. You get to have those conversations, right? Taking out home equity to fund investments can be risky. Absolutely agree. Okay. And I, and I have a case study for this. Many people use HELOCs for funds to start a business, for a down payment on another property or put into stocks. But financial advisors warn that such investments can be ris risky. In recent years, some aggressive investors would take out a HELOC balance at a low rate and invest the proceeds in anticipation of a higher return in the market. This arbitrage is no longer an optimal strategy with HELOC rates more than double what they were a year ago. This is also true, right? You'll be wanting to have these conversations with your client in the beginning, when you're gathering data, you really want to figure out where this person is at, right? This is something that I I learned uh, pretty early, actually really late into my financial coaching practice, right? Is not getting enough information. Nowadays, I'm asking way more information than ever before when I hop on that first call, or I'm asking for more information before the call, even after the call, right? And I think that's the, yeah, that's the end of the article there.